Hello students, myself Chanda Ranjan from Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Oxford College of Pharmacy, Bangalore. Today I am going to discuss about qualitative analysis of a new unknown sample. Then after the video, you can be able to understand how do we conduct preliminary investigation of any unknown compound in the lab. Here, I'm showing you one image that is a conical flask containing a sample. You can see the physical appearance and color of the sample. It is a colorless liquid. So the inference we get, it can be an alcohol, ketone, aldehyde, ester, phenol, amines. It can be anything. Odor, it has fruity odor. So it can be an ester, alcohol or any halogen derivatives. After that, we will see the solubility criteria, characteristics of the given sample. What we found, we found that it is slightly soluble in water, slightly soluble in HCl and slightly soluble in 5% NaOH. It was completely soluble in ether. We have seven groups according to the solubility characteristics of any compound. It can be, it is soluble in water and ether, but it is slightly soluble. So it can belong to group one. And it is was also found that is soluble in H2SO4. So it can be group five element also. So, it, what inference we get, it is maybe a group 1 or group 5 compound, for example, ketones, aldehydes, esters, ethers, anhydrides, or acyl halides. After this, we will test its acidic and basic nature using litmus paper. When we are taking the sample and we dip the blue litmus paper, the blue litmus change red, so it can be a acidic compound, acids or phenols, anything. After that, we will see the action of 5% NHCO3, that is sodium bicarbonate. It was soluble in it, but no characteristic changes was there. So acids or ester can be anything. Then we'll see the action of H2SO4, it was soluble. It was soluble, that is why it can be a group 5 compounds also. Then we will see the aliphatic and aromatic nature also. We will we'll take the sample into the spatula and will directly hit it over the flame. It has no sooty flame, so it is, can be an aliphatic compound. We have another test for aromaticity and aliphaticity detection, that is nitration test also. What we will do, we will take the sample and we'll add HNO3 and H2SO4 and we'll directly heat it and pour it into the beaker that contains water. Since it has not changed the color to yellow, so it is an aliphatic compound. As aromatic compound gives you yellow color. We will test the saturation as well as unsaturation also. We have two tests for it. First is bromine water test and second is Beer's reagent test. In the bromine water test, if the color of the bromine discharged, it shows the unsaturation. Here, the bromine color has not discharged, so compound is saturated. Then we have Beer's reagent test in which we take alkaline potassium permanganate and what we are seeing here that the pink color has also not been discharged. So the compound is again saturated. Now we are, we will do the elemental detection of the preliminary investigation, which is the, uh, which is followed by first, how we prepare a sodium fusion extract that is also known as lasagnes extract. We take dry sodium in a fusion tube and heat it on the Bunsen burner so that the sodium melts and looks red hot. After that, we add a pinch of the sample over it. We slowly heat it on the Bunsen burner and then continue heating till it also becomes red hot. 
so that the compound fuses with the sodium. We plunge the red hot tube into the china dish containing distilled water and crush the contents with the glass rod or a motor pestle and heat it to boiling so that the solution can be concentrated. After it's concentrate, the, the sample is filtered using funnel and filter paper and what we got as a filtrate is called as lasagnes extract or sodium fusion extract. I'm also trying to show you with the help of a diagram that shows you dramatically how it is the how the sodium fusion extracts preparation is done. Now we have the sodium fusion extract, so we will test the special elements. What special elements we test? We test nitrogen, sulfur, halogen. First, we test the nitrogen. What we do? We'll take the sample, we'll add one ml of ferrosulfate solution, shake it. First, if we get no dark greenish gray precipitate of ferrous hydroxide, we follow with the addition of one ml of dilute sulfuric acid. We heat it. If we get again a Prussian blue precipitate, then nitrogen is present. Here we are not getting the Prussian blue color, so nitrogen is absent. We'll follow the next test that is test for sulfur we'll take the test tube and we'll put the sample and we'll add three drops of freshly prepared nitroprusside solution and we'll shake it if we are getting a brilliant purple color it shows the presence of sulfur uh, or and absence gives you the absence of sulfur we have another test for sulfur that is lead acetate test we take the sample and we add one ml of dilute acetic acid and few drops of lead acetate if it gives you black precipitate sulfur is present or otherwise sulfur is absent then we have to test the halogens we take the test tube we take the sample and we add one ml of dilute nitric acid and one ml of silver nitrate solution and we shake it if we get a white or yellow precipitate halogens is present if not it shows the absence of halogens since here nitrogen and sulfur both are absent there is no need to do the test for nitrogen and sulfur together but for your for your understanding i'm here explaining you for the nitrogen and sulfur test together we take the sample and we add 2 ml of dilute hcl and 1 ml of <clears throat> pericloride solution we shake it if we get a dry blood red color, then it shows the presence of nitrogen and sulfur together. Here, we are not getting blood red color formation, so nitrogen and sulfur both are present. So after the elemental analysis, what we are concluding that it is showing the absence of any special elements that is nitrogen, uh, nitrogens, halogens and sulfur. We'll test the neutral ferric chloride solution test also. We take the sample and we add one ml of ferric chloride, that's APCl3. If we are getting purple color, it shows the presence of phenol, otherwise it is absent. So after all these things, what conclusion we are drawing? We are drawing the conclusion that after the preliminary investigation, element analysis and solubility analysis, the compound showed saturated aliphatic behavior and acidic character. The compound lacks the presence of a special elements. The compound is slightly soluble in water, 5% HCl and 5% OH, but completely soluble in ether and H2SO4, which shows that the compound belongs to group 1 and 5. It can be any compound. Here I am attaching the link which has the description about the different groups according to the solubility data. So we are left with the possibilities of ketones, aldehydes, esters and ethers. We will test first the ketones and aldehydes present that is together we called that is sorry that is together called carbonyl compounds. For the carbonyl compounds we test the 2 for DMP reagent test. Here I am showing you the reaction also. We have the carbonyl compound and 2,4 DNP that is 2,4 diphenylhydrazine that after reaction converts to 2,4 diphenylhydrazone that has orange or yellow color. Here we are not getting orange red precipitate. So carbonyl group is absent. We will again test the carbonyl group presence with sodium bisulfite. We will take the sample and will and dissolve it in 
three ml of sodium bisulfite solution and we'll shake it. If we are getting a white precipitate, carbonate is present; otherwise, it is absent. So the possibilities of ketones and aldehydes has been ruled out. Now we have ethers. We'll check the presence of ethers. For the ethers, we have Pagel test. What we do? We take a, the sample and we take a filter paper and plug the test tube. The filter paper we have to first moist with cupric acetate and benzidine hydrochloride. And then after that, after the plugging, we have to heat the sample. After heating, if the the filter paper changes to blue it is shows the presence of ether otherwise it is absent so the possibilities of ether is also ruled out so what the compound we have is a ester we will check now the ester functional group for esters we have fruity smell test Already I have shown you in the preliminary investigation that the compound had fruity smell, so it can be an ester. We have another test for esters functional group is the octaline test. We take the sample and we dissolve it in NaOH, and one ml of octaline is added. If the pink color is discharged, it shows the presence of ester. Here. We, I am showing you that the pink color has been discharged, so ester is present. Why the pink color has discharged is can be understood with the help of the given reaction. Here, the ester and NaOH is firstly taken. Due to the presence of NaOH, alkaline medium we have, that is why phenolphthalein is pink in color. When the reaction is complete, we are getting an acid that is an organic acid. This organic acid and NaOH will be neutralized. So we will get an will get an a neutral solution. And once the formation of R1COOH, any organic acid will increase, we will get an acidic medium. So that the color will be changed to colorless and we know phenolphthalein is pink in alkaline solution and colorless in acidic medium so ester is present after that we have another test for the confirmation of for esters is hydroxyl hydroxylamine hydrochloride test in that we take the sample and we dissolve and we add 1 ml of hydroxylamine hydrochloride plus 3 4 drops of potassium hydroxide and we heat it after that we add 1 ml of hydrochloric acid to acidify the medium and then we add 3 to 4 drops of ferric chloride solution if we get a, a violet color the, the, the compound can be an ester so ester is confirmed so after this all this all um, in all experiments we concluded that it is an aliphatic ester which aliphatic ester is commonly used in the lab is an ethyl acetate as per now we have no specific test to confirm its presence but with the preliminary investigations it can be said that it can be an ethyl acetate i hope can you you understand how the qualitative analysis of any unknown sample is done. Thank you so much.